I'm Robert Dempsey. Welcome to the first step on your Agile journey, an introduction to Agile. A number of years ago, a group of software developers got together and created what's called the Agile Manifesto. The Agile Manifesto sets out values which boil down to four main points. People, delivery, involvement, and adapting. For years, software development has been a black hole for a lot of people. Users have requested features, which they may or may not ever have gotten, and customers have delivered tome-like volumes of requirements to software development firms, only to wait months to receive something that either A, they can't use, or B, they didn't want in the first place. I've also heard numerous stories of users being very frustrated with using the software that we software developers are creating. Our users deserve much better. And in today's markets, they demand it. So let's take a look at how we can turn all of this around. The first value that we're going to look at is people. This is written in the Agile Manifesto as individuals and interactions over processes and tools. So here we have to ask ourselves a few questions. The first question is, why are we building this? What is our product vision? What goal are we trying to accomplish? Or what problem are we trying to solve? The next question is who are we building this for? And when I say that, I don't simply mean an administrator or a user. I mean, is Sally in accounting going to be using this? Or is Bob in marketing going to be using this? We need to know more about these people, not just as a role, but as a person, as a user. Finally, we need to know what do these users want? And this brings up the topic of requirements. Now in Agile, we write requirements in the format of user stories. User stories have two parts to them. They have the title and they have the acceptance criteria. Let's see how the title's formatted. So here's the format. We have as a role, I can do something so that I can get some benefit. So let's take a look at an example. As a user, I can sign up so that I can use the site. Great. So we now see who, the what, and the why. So the second part of our user story is the acceptance criteria which is where the real meat of it lies. Let's take a look. So here's the acceptance criteria for our current user story. We have sign up using an email address, sign up using a password, an email can only be used one time, and an email must be formatted correctly. Fantastic. So armed with a set of these, developers can now estimate what they need to do, and they also understand the who, the what, and the why. And also, business can easily understand these requirements. No more, the system shall this, the system shall do that. The second value we're going to look at is delivery, which is written in the manifesto as working software over comprehensive documentation. Now, this comes down to two big points, building the right thing and focusing on quality. Let's take a look at building the right thing first. The Stangis Group every year releases a report called the Chaos Report. The latest one was in 2009 and looks at projects between 2006 and 2008. Let's look at some of the stats. The first stat is for project success, which dropped 3% to go down to 32%. Project failure rates went up by 5%. Cost overruns went from 47% to 54%. Time overruns were up 7% to hit 79%, and feature use is holding steady at between 20 and 25%. So this means that a lot of projects out there aren't doing so well, and a majority of the features being developed aren't even being used. So I wonder why is this happening? So to figure that out, let's look at the difference between traditional methods of project management and agile methods. So this chart just shows very quickly that waterfall, which is one of the traditional methods, is very plan driven, whereas agile is very value driven. Now the way that we keep things value driven in agile is by using the product backlog, which is basically a list of all of our requirements, which we've seen are written as user stories. It lives as long as the project and evolves along with the project, meaning items are pulled in and out and constantly shifted about. It's also sorted in order of priority. Let's take a look at an example of a product backlog. So here we have a product backlog already sorted in priority order 
with the highest priority items on top. And we've also already gone ahead and selected the user stories that we want for our first release. Now this brings up another great point, and that is in Agile, we fix time and resources, but we adjust scope. This allows us to remain flexible and to be able to adapt to continuous changes in business. So our second major point here was a focus on quality. There's a lot of ways in the software that we can do that, three of which are test-driven development, continuous integration, and automated acceptance testing. By using these techniques, we can ensure that not only are we rapidly delivering features, but we also are delivering quality software. Our third value is involvement, which is written as customer collaboration over contract negotiation. So there's two big points to cover here, story carding and feedback loops. Story carding is that initial requirements gathering process. It's when we sit down with the customer and figure out what it is they want. It's when we write all of those user stories. A lot of times teams will literally write these on index cards. Let's take a look at an example of one of these. So here we have our story card. We have the user story on top and all of the acceptance criteria written below. So we'll come up with a stack of these during that story carding process, which can take from a few hours to a few days, depending on the scope of the project. So the second point, as I mentioned, are feedback loops. One of the goals of Agile is to make the entire process very transparent. No longer should software development be this black box. So what that means is that we need to make everything that we do an information radiator. People just need to know what's going on at all points in the project. We can do this with our process and we can also do this with our code. With our process, we have things like our sprint planning session, our sprint review session, daily scrums, if you're doing scrum, and also burn down charts. With scrum, we have sprint burn down charts and we have release burn down charts. Now our code can also be information radiators. Using continuous integration servers will let us know if anything that we've added broke anything that we've already developed. And using automated acceptance testing allows us to know whether or not what we're gonna deliver is not only what the user wants, but it works in the way that they expect it to work. The final value we're gonna look at is adapting, which the Agile Manifesto defines as responding to change over following a plan. This is one of the biggest reasons that people come to Agile in the first place, the ability to respond to an ever-changing business environment. And I think we can all agree that today, the environment changes not only monthly, but weekly and sometimes daily. So there are a number of ways that we can handle this. At the end of each sprint, if you're doing Scrum, the Scrum Master and the team hold what's called a sprint retrospective. This is where they look at the sprint and how it went purely from a process standpoint. You look at things like, what did we do right? So what should we do more of? And what went wrong and how can we improve that? After this takes place, the Scrum Master sits down with the product owner and reprioritizes the product backlog based on the current business needs. Now, if you're developing software every two weeks and showing value every two weeks, then you have the ability to change direction every two weeks. This is one of the most powerful aspects of Agile. Agile is about people, delivery, involvement, and adapting. Our users and customers deserve quality applications that do what they want in a way that they expect it. Today's markets demand it, and using Agile, we can deliver. I look forward to walking the rest of this Agile journey with you. I'm Robert Dempsey, and I'll see you next time.